So some of you may have heard of Gonzalo Lira, a.k.a. Coach Red Pill on YouTube. He's been reporting live from both Kiev and Kharkiv in Ukraine. Uh, he's a dual citizen of the United States and of Chile, and he's been well known to give his perspective on what's going on there, just a real on-the-ground sort of unbiased perspective of that whole situation because he's in the middle of it. He's in the middle of this so-called war zone in Ukraine, and it's really refreshing to get, I guess, an average person's perspective and somebody who isn't biased either. He would be a little bit more sympathetic toward Putin than the mainstream media. In other words, he would give an unbiased view of both sides of the conflict. So this is where Zelensky and the Ukrainians are coming from, and this is where Putin and the Eurasianists are coming from. And he would give this perspective in an unbiased way that was really refreshing in my, from my view. I watched plenty of his videos the past couple of months, and I learned a lot from this guy. I, I mean, he, he really has an in-depth understanding of that region and why Putin decided to suddenly invade Ukraine. And that's something important to understand, right? Uh, you know, most people have no clue. They just think Putin just decided one day to invade Ukraine because he's a crazy person. It's much more complicated than that. And if you know the situation, you would understand that there's a lot of nuance involved. And, you know, it's very similar to how people would perceive World War II when Hitler invaded Poland, they thought he just did it on a whim, like there was no reason why he invaded Poland to start World War II. It was because, you know, after the Treaty of Versailles, you know, um, World War I, much of Germany was given to Poland, and that area that still had many Germans living in the new Poland, uh, you know, had a, a well-known... <laughs> But German presence and these Germans were mistreated, so that's why Hitler invaded. So, you know, anyways, I digress quite a bit there. But the whole point is there's much more nuance to history. It isn't all black and white. It isn't all good and evil. Life isn't a Marvel movie, guys. Like, this is... This is how delusional, like, the Redditors are and your average, I guess, Zoomer idiotic dummy who just doesn't understand geopolitics at all. And they don't understand the nuance of the world. So Gar uh, Gonzalo gave a really good perspective on this. And of course, because he's not like blindly pro Zelensky uh, and pro neo-Nazi Azov battalion, um, you had establishment hacks uh, and these publications like the daily beast who actually wrote an article on me back in 2014 <laughs> i don't know if any of you remember that i think it was like 2014 or 15 they wrote an article on me uh yeah literally um what's his name benjamin something from the daily beast uh, i forget his name now but he wrote an article on me they're well known to just attempt to uh crucify publicly regular people on the internet with YouTube channels, right? But they wrote this hit piece on Coach Red Pill, calling him a pro-Putin shill. He definitely was not pro-Putin at all. You know, he was just kind of unbiased in the way he approached the situation, but, you know, shared a lot of good info. And, of course, he was demonized by not only the Daily Beast, but the mainstream media. And the Daily Beast apparently gave his name and his location and information to the authorities in Ukraine. And if you know anything about the Zelensky regime right now, they're sort of in war mode. They're in panic mode. Obviously, they've been in that mode for the past couple of months since the invasion. And they have uh, really ruthless battalions, like the Azov Battalion, like the SBU, the, the Kraken Regiment, or whatever it's called. You know, these guys are all like neo-Nazis. And it's really awkward. They're kind of working for Zelensky, who's a Jew. And by the way, Israel's highly involved playing both sides of this conflict. In case you didn't know, I, I made a whole video on that. And it's really kind of interesting. But anyway... Um, these are really dangerous guys, and, you know, I think we all can come to the conclusion, especially after what I'm about to show you here, that they got a hold of Gonzalo, uh, Gonzalo because Gonzalo posted this on Twitter a few weeks back. He had this, um, I guess, plan or, or protocol, you could say, where he would 
post somehow, whether it be on Twitter or Telegram or YouTube or whatever, every 12 hours to let everybody know he's okay. Um, and he posted this uh, back on March 26th. You want to learn the truth about Zelensky and the Zelensky regime? Google these names. And he lists some names. These are all people that were kidnapped or killed by the Zelensky regime. And then he says, if you haven't heard from me in 12 hours or more, put my name on that list. Gonzalo Lira. Um, and the last anybody heard from him was on April 15th, five days ago. So we're supposed to get an update every 12 hours from him. And, you know, just a little bit after the Daily Beast published this article and basically let the authorities in Ukraine know where he was and like who he is, he disappears. And by the way, he posts this video too, not too long ago. So check this out really quick. So I want you guys to know that if ever you don't hear from me for 12 hours hmm, during this conflict, if it's 12 hours or more, assume that I've been picked up by the SBU and assume that the people most responsible are the Daily Beast. The Daily Beast, who deliberately lied about me, claiming that I'm not in Kharkov, admitted to the fact that people are looking for me and want to get a hold of me in the very hit piece that they wrote, and that they contacted the Ukrainian government to make them aware that I'm in Kharkov, make them aware of my significance, make them aware so they can send some SBU goons to get me. Understand what the Daily Beast has done. And when I said, you know, in the, in the title of this, that the Daily Beast wants to kill me, I'm not being hyperbolic. So, so I want you guys he to also was scheduled to uh, be in an interview on the 17th of April uh, on Moats TV with George Galloway. And he didn't show up. It never happened. So, you know, people are really worried. You also have this independent journalist, Ava Karen Bartlett, posting on Facebook. I'm very sorry to say that I haven't heard from Gonzalo Lira since the morning of April 15th. On April 16th, around 10 a.m., I sent a message asking how he's doing. Normally, he reads and replies very quickly. He hasn't read it. In late March, he pinned a tweet warning that if he went offline for 12 hours or more, add him to the list of people assassinated by the Nazi crim criminals in Ukraine. The names he included are sadly only a small number of journalists and ordinary citizens murdered by the Nazis in Ukraine. Yeah, this is a well-known situation. You have these guys, part of the Azov Battalion, part of the Kraken Regiment, that are part of the SBU as well, that are kneecapping anti Zelensky journalists, or at least, you know, I say anti Zelensky, but that's just like a colloquial term that just means half the time it really just means independent, unbiased, right? And, you know, that's the thing. Like, it's like this idea it's of, you know, you, you, it's very similar. You saw it with COVID where people, if they supported the idea of your right to choose whether or not you get a vaccine, um, if you support the right to choose, um, then you're anti-vax, even though half the people, or at least a large portion, decent portion of the people that strongly supported the right to choose were vaccinated and in general recommended people get vaccines. Uh, but of course, because they're not pro mandates, they're considered anti-vaxxers. So it's very similar, I think, in this situation where, you know, if you're like, well, you know, Zelensky is a bad guy, just like Putin. And like, you can't trust any of these people. You know, if you come at it from that perspective, you're going to be labeled pro Putin. Um, so... I think that's that's pretty obvious. Um, now, you have a former UN intelligence officer, Scott Ritter, writing on Telegram that essentially Gonzalo was killed uh, or at least captured. Um, so he writes this. This is Scott Ritter, again, former UN intelligence uh, official. 
when Belarusian authorities pulled Roman Patrasevich, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, a blogger who had served a combat tour uh, in the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion before working for Free Radio, or Radio Free Europe's um, Belarus channel out of Prague, off an airplane in May 2021 on charges of inciting a political opposition, roughly the equivalent of sedition, the world went crazy, accusing Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko of trampling uh, on free speech. Uh, Protasevich uh, is alive and well, living under house arrest while awaiting trial. When reports emerged that Gonzo Lira, a, Chile a Chilean social media influencer, who resided in Kharkov, Ukraine, and who published online content critical of the Ukrainian government, was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered by the Kraken unit, part of the Azov Battalion affiliated um, with the SBU. The West is silent. Free speech isn't a one-way street. To remain silent in the murder of Gonzo Lira is to be complicit in his death and the deaths of all journalists who pursue the truth even if it runs counter to the mainstream narrative. Critical thinking should not be a death sentence. Unfortunately for Gonzo Lira, it seems it was. It does seem that way, guys. I don't think people understand how ruthless some of these dudes are. It, you know, some of these Slavs are in Ukraine. So here's a Twitter post by somebody who's uh, affiliated with the Kraken units, right? His name is Bots Manoa. Uh, that's his Twitter handle on Twitter. And I'm going to go into this guy. We're, we're going we're gonna to talk about him a little bit here. This is a picture he posted on Twitter saying this. If anyone knows where Gonzalo Lira is, please make a single bicep pose. And of course, you can see... This individual um, who is part of the Kraken unit, we're going to talk about these guys, is making the bicep pose. And you see this other guy, you know, he has the Kraken unit symbol on his sleeve here. And this is Sergei Botswan Karakik Botsbanoa. This is the guy posting it, right? So this is, just so you know, like right here, this is, this is the guy's Twitter handle. And Botsmanoa uh, also posted this tweet not long before the one I just showed you with, with with him going like this you know with with him flexing his his um, bicep the irony of Gonzalo Lira a Chilean being caught by a guy with a call sign Chile is hilarious anyway let's hope the beheading pops up on telegram soon and by the way he was banned off Twitter for that because he's essentially calling for violence but the whole point is Let's talk about this Bots Manoa guy and the other guy with the code name Chili, the guys you just saw in the photo. So this is Sergey Vilichenko, call sign Chili, who allegedly kidnapped Gonzalo Lira, according to Bots Manoa. And you can see him here. Um, you know, he's part of the Azov Battalion. He's uh, depicted in this uh, photo here. That's the Chile guy. That's the Chile guy, right? Sergey, Sergey uh, Velichenko. So he's allegedly, essentially, the guy who may have killed or captured Coach Red Pill. And check this out. Now, this is be be weary. This is potential Russian propaganda because I mean. I don't even want to say, I mean, I'm sure that the algorithm could figure it out, but this is a news report from like a, a Russian <laughs> source. But I mean, I don't think, I don't know. So, so take it with a grain of salt, but it talks about Bots Manoa and his history in the Azov unit uh, and his history with neo-Nazism. These are ruthless guys that, uh, that posted and claimed to have basically killed Coach Red Pill in Ukraine. So check this out. Best members. 
go Nazi with a very colourful past. An ex-Belarusian citizen and member of far-right groups since the 90s, back in 2004, Bosman co-founded the Nationalist Socialist Society, a neo-Nazi group now banned in Russia. A few years later, he was accused of a failed bomb attack on one of Moscow's main squares. But he really rose to notoriety when a grisly video of his emerged in 2007, showing a pair of masked executioners shooting and beheading two migrants. Botsman fled Russia, first to Belarus and then to Ukraine. And while he managed to evade justice, his fellow NSS members did not. In 2011, 13 members of the group led by Karakik, the National Socialist Society, were convicted for 27 murders and 50 assaults in 2008. In Ukraine, Botsman landed on his feet. He became an instructor in the Azov Battalion and then a commander fighting the separatists in Donbass. And despite alarm from local media and human rights groups, Botsman was personally handed a Ukrainian passport by then President Petro Poroshenko, where he was snapped doing the Nazi sun salutation. Less than a year after arriving in Ukraine, he became head of the Department of Strategic Objects and apparently enjoyed the patronage of the former Minister of Internal Affairs. As his status rose, so did his finances. He had managed to accrue a million dollars, one and a half Kiev apartments and a private plane in less than a year, and all on an official salary of $237 a month. Rumours persist that Botsman continues his life of crime. In recent years, two of his close acquaintances have died in suspicious circumstances, and he's also been linked to the murder of a journalist. When war came to Ukraine, he showed his willingness to fight dirty. You are just devils that decided to attack Ukraine. Well, we are waiting for you. Please come. We are going to play football with your severed heads. And it seems he's being supported. We're going to play foot. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty badass, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah, these aren't good guys. These are bad guys, right? And uh, I, I unfortunately do think that um our good buddy coach red pill was i mean it seems inevitable you know it seems like it's obvious it must be the case and the only reason i say that is because he's in enemy territory posting on youtube getting a lot of traction uh speaking out against the regime the same regime that has these violent extremist, you know, far right neo Nazis, which by the way, I don't even know why they're neo Nazis when Hitler hated Slavs. These are Slavs. Okay? Anyways. Yeah. They're gonna get a hold of him, especially if you got the Daily Beast and like probably many others, uh, alerting the authorities who command these these really bad guys in Ukraine to do their dirty work. They're well known to kneecap uh, pro-Russian people, the well-known to not be very tolerant. And, you know, of course, whether or not Coach Red Pill was pro-Russian doesn't, doesn't even matter. The fact that he, um, was, was centrist about it or, or unbiased means he was pro-Putin in their book. So I hope I'm wrong here. I hope maybe he turns up, maybe, I don't know. You know, maybe he's got uh, maybe he's got COVID or something. You know, like <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I would just say like pray that he shows up. Hey, it's been five days. That's the longest it's gone. He's it's gone without hearing from him. It doesn't seem like a long time, but he was giving updates every twelve hours and said if I don't update in twelve hours, I'm dead essentially or kidnapped or whatever. And that looks like the case here, especially with, with everything that was going on. So um, let's just hope we're wrong. Pray that we're wrong. If not, pray for his family. That's all I got to say about that. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. And also, if you want to um, if you want to contribute to my channel, to my work, I have a Patreon in the description box below. It's been Press. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.